Okay guys, how's it going? I'm back. So this may be a part two, I'm not sure, but we are now in back of the house that I grew up between the ages of three and six. I'm gonna try to keep things moving along. Some people that live here, they're getting a little nervous, so they say. They don't know what I'm up to, they wanna know, they're curious. Maybe someday they'll run across this video. Maybe they'll be upset, I don't know, I hope not. Because that's not my intention, I don't wanna upset people. Usually I do things that are much different than the social norm is. So like in this situation here, I'm kinda of just trying to be sweet and share with you my life story. And sometimes just doing some nice stuff really upsets other people. So let's move on to that. I have forgiveness, I'm a big person, big heart, and I can kind of have compassion to what it is they're going through. So with that being said, right now here are the trees. There's a lot of trees separating um, where I'm standing right now. We got baseball going on, a baseball game. And uh, we got a couple baseball fields. So this was a big part of our backyard because behind these trees are the backyard. And what I want to share with you really quick is many things happened out here. I'm going to run through them fast because I do want to share the rest of my life story with you and I don't want to totally bore you. Or if you're getting bored, please let me know. What is it that I could do to improve it a little bit? Could I skip some of the... Do you feel that there's some unnecessary things being mentioned here? Are you interested? Are you interested? Do you want to share with me things that happened to you as a child growing up? Uh, did you pretend a lot when you were a child? Because back here is where I used to pretend a lot of times. Um, I always spent a lot of time alone because the other children were in school at that time and I was with my mother and my nanny at this point. And I would always be told, you know, sometimes when, why don't you go out and play? I would be like, I'm bored, I'm bored. And my mom didn't always want to. She loved me and wanted to be with me, but at the same token, she didn't always, always want to be with me. She needed time alone to do with some other things. And I have a great deal of respect for that. So I would spend a lot of time on the other side of these trees by myself playing in the yard. And I always had my imaginary friend or friends. And uh, a lot of times I was a girl <laughs> running through the yard. I'm going to tell you some quick things, which is one, I was in there, we had a garden back here. And I remember that's the first time I ran into a snake. There was a garden snake. And I remember walking through that garden. And there it was. Oh, did I scream and scream and go running up to the house. And my uncle eventually came down and got it. I don't remember what he did to the snake. Uh, I don't know if it's really that important, but... I just remember I was disgusted and I was scared. Another thing that happened is we used to play hide-and-seek. Did you ever play hide-and-seek? You know, where um, there would be somebody that would be it, is what we called it, I-T, it. Um, and they were the person that would have to go and count to a certain number. And meanwhile, everybody else that was playing went and hid. So as they were hiding, um, and they finally hit that count, they would go searching around for Tracy Lynn, searching around for her brothers and sisters and cousins. And let's just say, because I was usually the smallest, I was usually the one who was hit for a very long time, <laughs> because there was always a home base that eventually everybody had to run to. And if you made it to that home base, then you couldn't be it. <laughs> so that was usually it. But I do remember one night we were playing back here and bats. Did you ever have an encounter with a bat? Did you ever have a bat fly over your head? Did you ever hear the tales of a bat that they will swoop down and pick you up and fly you and take you to wherever, their cave? <laughs> a bat will pick you up with its claws or whatever is his feet and he will fly you to a cave. I don't know what it'll do with you in the cave. They used to tell me different things. I don't know if it's true or not. They said he would drink my blood. <laughs> we won't go too deep on some of the scary things they would tell me it would do. But on the other side of that, I would run that night. I ran into the house. And I'll never forget because the bat alley swooped down and actually got into my cousin's hair. And from that day, I always said, uh, bats had this attraction to hair. Or what it was, I don't know. <laughs> so I was scared to go out at nighttime for many years. Many years after that, I was afraid to go outside because a bat was going to get me. <laughs> During the day, it's okay. But 
Okay, so that was the story. And I used to lay out a lot of the time there. My mom would listen to a lot of the 70s music. And, uh, you know, we did a lot of sunbathing over the spring and summer months. We were always working on her tans together. And I loved it because she would always have a blanket laying on the ground. Okay, guys, is that record on? Can you see me? Okay, so we were talking about the bad. Then I was talking about over here with my mother laying on. She would always have a spot on her blanket for me to lay with her. And that was a big part of my life. I was raised that in relaxing in the sun, not overdoing it. But that was a beautiful thing, you know, and you did it together with somebody that you loved. So we didn't have a swimming pool. We didn't have a beach. We didn't have none of that. But we did get the opportunity to do that together and while listening to music. We also, over the winter months, my mom had a sun lamp. It was like a light bulb that, of course, created and generated a lot of heat, and sometimes we would lay in the house um, with that sun lamp. So I'm gonna kind of leave over here. I can just say that we had a lot of fun times. This is where we played a lot of the times in the backyard with my friend, and over here where the baseball game's going on. There's another house um, with parents that had two children. One was a boy, one's a girl, and I hung out with the guy, and uh, let me just say that this is the first bike that I ever got. I don't remember what it was. It might have been a General Lee bike. I'm not 100% sure. It was kind of like a motorcycle. It was a black bike though, bike frame, dirt bike. It had silver spokes and I think it did have the, uh, you know, the, uh, it was orange with uh, the number 01 on it. It might not have been, but I kind of remember it being that. But here's the thing. At some point, unfortunately for him, his bike got stolen. His dad went out and got him the exact same bike a brand new one, and then later on, the cops actually found his old bike. What do you think of that? Amazing detective work they did, huh? What do you think of that? Officers found my friend's stolen bike. Thank you, officer. That was very friendly of you, very kind of you to take the time to find his bike. And what ended up happening is he didn't need two bikes anymore. So he volunteered to sell me my first bike for $25. $25. Isn't that cool? Can you get a bike for $25 used even? Um, this one was like brand new. Unfortunately, the people who stole it scratched it, whether they dropped it or, you know, if they did it on purpose or what have you. Obviously, they took it on purpose. But he had given it to me for $25. I remember I went into the house and I cried to my mom that I really want this bike. I was so excited. And my mom didn't have much money, but the bottom line is she didn't want to see me sad. I was throwing a hissy fit for at least a day and a half. <laughs> at least for a day and a half, I was just freaking out and crying. I want a bike. I want a bike. I want to go riding with my friend around the neighborhood too. Everyone has a bike. My brother has a bike. Everyone has a bike. <laughs> I want a bike too. So, guess what? Guess who got a bike for $25? I got the $25 to buy the bike. And also, as I was walking along through there on the other side of that baseball field where my friend lived, there's a long tree line, bushes. And let me just say, as I'm walking out here to the playground that we used to spend a lot of time in, that we had a, what was called a mini bike. And it had like a lawnmower engine. You know, you pull the string, pull the string, and then it fires up. You have the throttle like a motorcycle. You have the brake, you know, a little hand brake. And, uh, like that, that's my hand puppet. Nice to meet you. I gotta put eyes on that, I guess. So here it is. I remember I wasn't old enough to ride it, but I could ride on it. So I would sit on the back with my mom's boyfriends a lot of times. Um, she had one specifically who our family kind of adopted in as our stepfather. You know, we loved him so much. Uh, he was into muscle cars and he had his own motorcycle. And let's just say that he filled a, filled a lot of the void that our whole family, including my mother, was missing. And we love him greatly even to this day. And we're very appreciative that he, was, he took time to be in our lives. Because he got a lot of slack. You know, in those days, you know, a mother being separate from, you know, divorced was not well accepted, at least not in our other family, with our other family members, not within the local society here. Um, they couldn't accept that. So it was kind of tough, because she was being judged all the time with it, you know, that 
no matter what she was going through, she should have stayed with her husband. And can I just say something? I'm glad that, that she did what she did. Looking back on it now, Mom, if you're watching this, I'm very grateful that you had the courage and the strength to walk away from somebody who, uh, I don't want to disrespect him, but he wasn't appreciating you to the fullest. Okay? Um, everybody lives different lifestyles, and, you know, the bottom line is what he was doing uh, was not healthy for their relationship because she wasn't in agreement with it. Okay? Let's just leave it at that. It just wasn't a good match. He could have been with anybody else doing what he did, but um, let's not beat him up because I love you, Dad. I forgive you, and uh, it just wasn't a healthy match. And therefore, society was putting the pressure on both of them. You've got to stay together. No, that's not true. That is not true. It's so sad, really. If uh, you're really strongly feeling that uh, separation is that what's best and healthiest for the whole family, then separate. Okay? Separate. Don't let the pressure of society make you do anything ever in your life. Don't let the pressure of others ever make you do anything. Society wants to do that, sometimes on purpose, sometimes by accident. Let us not let other people pressure us into stealing parts off of cars from other people. Let us not force ourselves to be in unhealthy and unstable relationships, okay? Where there's not full agreement amongst each other. No? And let us uh, accept other people into our family and into our life that might fill the void. How's that? And that's what he did. I remember the first time when we were riding on that, that mini bike, I used to sit up front on the, on the gas tank. And he loved it. He loved me so much. He really did, this, this, my mom's boyfriend. And unfortunately for us, the mini bike laid over. Uh, I don't know what, it, what the reasoning was. Oh, I know what it was. Eventually they did get me on that mini bike and he would run beside me. But the problem is I started going really fast, really fast, really fast, really fast. And guess what? The mini bike fell over. He couldn't keep up with me. I, I, I went too fast and I was hurt. And can I tell you something? From that day forward, I was scared to ride a mini bike, a motorcycle. I felt in my place that I was safe to be on the mini bike with a man on the back or on the front. I felt safe and protected. But to just do it all by myself, no. I was scared. I was just scared. So I never did. And I'll share more about that as I get on with the later years. Um, but for now, those were some happy times. Can I tell you something else too? There was a season of time in my life, my mom was very beautiful and she loved to celebrate so she went out drinking with her friends and went to local clubs. She was big, disco was really big back then. So the Bee Gees is most certainly one of my favorite groups of all times. Oh, I can't even think of the guys' names off the top of my head now but let me just say the Bee Gees, they were hot in the 70s and our family loved them dearly. And I remember that's when John Travolta Staying alive! Staying alive, yes. John Travolta was also one of the men I thought were the sexiest ever. But remember, I wanted to be like Elevia Newton, John. <laughs> I wanted to feel safe in the arms of John Travolta. Yes, this is true. <laughs> I'm revealing all the dirt on Tracy Lynn right now. <laughs> What about you? Did you ever envision yourself being like someone else? Maybe uh, being a girl or a guy, maybe an animal, a child, having a different life. Did you ever pretend? Would you leave me a comment? As we go on and I'm sharing you my story, I'm going to encourage you to share your life with me. I'm not going to stop asking you. Um, share life with whoever. Maybe somebody else will come along. Maybe you, you two will be able to connect. Have something else in common. Never know. Might become a lifelong friend, family member. You never know. So here we are. The playground that I also grew up in, which was seemed humongous at the time of my childhood between the ages of three <laughs> and six. The years 75 through 78. 
We used to come back here a lot of times to pretend all of us did. We would carry on with kids together. My brother was big into baseball, so of course he played up here at the baseball uh, fields, and we would come up here and support him and cheer him on. Um, he was really good, really, really good at, 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 at baseball. I forget what position he played. I'm not sure if he was a pitcher or what have you, but I know he was talented. I think my one sister was into softball, and you know that's a whole other game right there. But um, and of course basketball. We played kickball in the backyard, frisbee, all kinds of stuff. You heard about the mini bike. What I wanted to share with you now, remember I told you my mother was very pretty, very attractive back in the day. Uh, many men were drawn to her because of her beauty. Um, a lot of times the wrong men, you know. Let's face it, nobody really wants to truly be alone. We want to share our lives with other people. I'm learning more importantly that it's important we connect with people that have similar passions in life. What do you feel about that? Don't you think you'd rather share time with people that aren't just with you because you're pretty or just because you have a certain talent or maybe you have money and they don't have money? Uh, don't you want to share your life with somebody that's maybe into the same things as you are? I do. I realize that more and more every day. I wish that I had people in my life that love to do the things in life that I enjoy doing. Right now, of course, I would want to be the center of attention, the star of the show, who is sharing her testimony, bravely, courageously, even when people are being offended. So here we go. We're here in the playground that I grew up. Now here's the thing I want to tell you, back to my mom's beauty. I remember a day that we had to make a, a choice. We all came together as a family. Family decision in order here. Family decision in order. My mom was seeing a really tall man, at that time taller than me, believe it or not, and she was seeing a shorter man with a pickup truck. The taller man, from what I remember, he had uh, either a fast car or a motorcycle. The shorter man had a brown pickup truck, customized, it was loud, it was awesome. The one that we ended up choosing, who uh, we had the mini bike experience and a lot of family experiences, guess what? It was also him. And the children were came together because my mom wanted to know. We wanted, she wanted us to be honest. Will you help me make this choice? Who do you guys like the most? Who do you like to see mommy with the most? So they each had their opportunity to take us for drives privately in their cars. One night they all showed up. They all showed up. And we had to go with them individually, and he had the opportunity to talk to us alone. And they all understood it was time. It was that time that mom made the choice to be with one. She couldn't be with all three. You had to be with one. They were all starting to have feelings for each other, you know, for, for my mother, and my mother was having feelings. She was kind of torn apart, and she wanted to do what was, she always wanted to do what was right for her children, you know? She wanted to do the best, make the best decision. So with that being said, we went for our joy rides, and one of them won our vote. I'll never forget that day as long as I live. I remember the tall guy, and I remember he showed up at our door, and I looked up. I looked up at him. And uh, for some reason, I really liked him. He had a gentle spirit. But anyway, I'm going to just leave it at this. We finally chose one, and we had many years of happiness uh, and, and joy with him. That story is going to be continued here in a little bit. Okay, we're going to wrap things up here. And I want to just ask you, did you ever get put on in a tight situation like that where you had to help somebody else make a, a very challenging decision and you knew it was going to more likely be permanent. Let's just say that the guy with the truck, he moved on, he got married. You know, he was so happily married that he even wrote it on the back of the, on the truck. I think at the time, Urban Cowboy was probably popular at least in the 80s or sometime during that time. And we do remember it sometime in the 80s where we would see these people eventually, and then we've seen how they moved on in their life. And let me just say that sometimes 
listen, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I'm going to be honest. Sometimes we would feel, as children, we would talk to each other and say, do you think we made the right choice for mom? And you're going to find out why. I'm going to do my very best not to hurt anybody's feelings, but I'm going to be honest, okay? Because in the end, my mom was hurt a lot through this relationship that we together as a team chose would be best for her and for our whole family. Okay, that's a lot, that's hard on children to make that right decision. We thought we were doing good. And you can imagine how we felt for a long time, but now there's relief. It wasn't our fault, it wasn't my mom's fault. Nobody can tell what's going to happen, right? Nobody knows what's going to really happen in the end. So anyway, we're all human. We're all going through life's journey, learning, trying to have forgiveness for everything, knowing that we all become who we are in the end because of everything that we go through and all the relationships that we endure. <laughs> Is that the right word? We endure relationships. Some can be quite challenging. So I want to show you one more thing up here. Don't need to go into the, the, the ball. But over here is probably the new sliding boards and stuff. There used to be sliding boards. I was always afraid of heights. So uh, we'd come back here and play and I would watch everybody else go up the sliding board. I wanted to be like them, but I would never go up that sliding board until one day I came back here when I had my driver's license. I climbed up that ladder and I went down the sliding board for the first time. And I'll tell you what, I can tell you that fear has held me from having a great life. Can I tell you that again? The things in life I feared... Let me just say that my fear has held me back from having an outstanding life. But I overcame some of those fears. That's what I'm doing right now. I was scared to share with uh, people my life journey because I didn't know what was going to happen if I did. I know if people would make fun of me. Are you making fun of me? It's okay. Actually, it's okay. I encourage it. Will you make fun of me? Will you take the time to leave a comment down below? And maybe even humiliate me by passing this on and telling your friends or people that you know on Facebook, ha, I just humiliated this person. They like to be humiliated. You should go onto her YouTube account and humiliate her too. Or how about saying something nice? How about sharing your life story? Did you ever have to make a tough choice like that? Do you remember riding a mini bike? Did you ever ride a mini bike or they had go-karts back in the day with his lawnmower uh, engines on? Look behind me. See this? It says no trespassing now. But back in the day, didn't have a no trespassing sign and it might not have been here. This might be a new stage. But I want to share with you right now. Tracy Lan used to come down here and pretend at the ages of three to six, she was Elvis. Not necessarily on that stage. There was other stages. Another stage. And there was no no trespassing sign. And again, I'm sure people may have possibly abused the fact that there's a stage there. Kids want to run up and play. Tracy Lynn used to run up and play and pretend she was Elvis. And Ella Newton-John. In fact, this is back here in the day when we would run around in this... Uh, playground can I just tell you from what I remember I could be wrong will you look it up it might have been the next place but we would imitate let's just put it this way let's keep it simple we would uh, take the movie and television shows and we would come back here and reenact them with our friends it was fun do you ever do anything like that do you ever watch like movies or television shows and then go out into your yards or maybe at your friend's house or in your house and just pretend you're that person or the characters and you all do it together as a team. Isn't that fun when you get more people to do things like that with you? I love to pretend. That's one of my favorite things in the world to do. I call it role playing now, but I guess it's still pretending. Do you like to pretend? And my brother used to play tennis back here. So I'm gonna wrap things up here because a lot of the other things that we used to do may or may not be relevant, maybe later dates. I'll come back here and share with you some pastimes. But let's just say that as I got my driver's license, I used to constantly go back to these places because I was searching. My whole life I was searching. I wanted happiness. Have you ever searched for happiness? I was illusionized sometimes by watching television. One of my favorite shows as a child growing up, two of them, uh, were Mickey Mouse. M-I-C-K-E-Y M-O-U-S-E Mickey Mouse 
Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> can you sing that song better than I can? I wish you could leave a video reply. I don't know if you can do that anymore. Send me a link. Sing Mickey Mouse for me. Do it your best. You never know who's going to watch it. You never know who's going to watch it. I'll watch it. I'll leave a comment too. Something very positive. Don't forget to put on your ears, of course. Now as well, you got to see a place where I got to first pretend on a stage that I was a rock and roll star. I got to see my brother play and I was a cheerleader. Can I just say, I always even knew then, I admired people. I thought they had courage. Are you understanding that if you go back through my other videos, you'll find out that I used to be a watcher, an observer, and I would always think to myself, these people are strong, these people are courageous. You know, I want to be beautiful like certain people. I always want to be like everything outside myself. But I doubted myself all the time. I was scared of everything. I don't know why. Even to this day, I don't know why. And sometimes I just got to kind of laugh at it, but can I just say when I was a teenager, got my driver's license, that I used to come back to these places and reminisce on old times. I wasn't just thinking life was better. I was thinking, why ain't I happy? Where's my happiness? Are you my happiness? I think you are. I think it's in my heart. What about you? Is happiness a state of mind? Do you think it is? Do you ever go through life searching for happiness? Searching for purpose? Searching for acceptance? I've done that a lot for many years. Let me tell you. Sometimes I still do it, and I have to stop. I have to stop and look in the mirror, or maybe not look in the lens, I have to look in the side screen. I found happiness. Happiness is me. Happiness is you. And those things, maybe I was scared to go on that sliding board because if I would have, maybe I would have slipped and fell, busted my face open. You know, the thing is, I always wanted to be very pretty. And imagine if I was all scarred up because I went on a sliding board. You know? Uh, what if I lit a fire and I would have burned the house down? Or if I would have lit fire and uh, would have hurt somebody or myself? You know? So, let's just lend us with uh, the playground scene was another place where we had lots of joy, fun times and more things to fear in life. The first time I remember being scared of heights. Yes, scared of heights. Now, I don't know if school is in session at the present moment. Okay, I don't remember even what day it is. I haven't been paying attention to my day or time. But what I'm gonna do to you is I'm gonna share with you right now the school, the very first school I went to, where we lived in a house there was an, uh, it was always separated by bushes. It's kind of like the whole yards were separated by bushes. And that was our, our um, that was our dividing line, property line, okay? So with that being said, I think today is Saturday. Am I wrong? Say Saturday? I think I came here on Thursday. Yesterday was Friday, probably. <laughs> I'm thinking today's Saturday. So with that being said, first day of school, I had to walk through the bushes by myself. Understand, I was with my mother and my family all those years. It was probably five or six, first year of school. My mom didn't have me go to kindergarten for many different reasons, but she didn't want me to go to school. She wanted me to be at home as long as possible. And in those days, you didn't go to kindergarten. You ended up, you could hold your child as far as first grade. So, this was a crucial point my life that I'm going to share with you right now. I'm going to speed things up. So I'm walking through these bushes over here, right? And I am going to school. And let me just tell you, I am not happy about this. I am scared. All I have is my friend, my two friends that live next door, and I have my family. So I feel kind of safe. 
I may have been going to school with them, I don't know. But my first day of school... No, I, I do remember. Look, I remember. Did you ever think you forgot? You didn't... You thought you forgot, but in the end, you remembered. That's what I just did. Look here. So there's no out. No outlet. But that's just for the road, okay? The gate is open over here. So I'm assuming school's not in session on a Saturday. And we're going to come over here. And I'm going to share with you the first place that I went with tears in my eyes and I had to separate with my mother. Understand, the first home to her second home was separation of parents. Now, separation of mother. Mommy, why did you do this to me? <laughs> Just kidding. Don't be upset. I understand. Children had to uh, be educated. It was my opportunity to show the world who I have become over the last five or six years. <clears throat> said imaginary friends now it's time to have real friends right so now it's much different here but there used to be a door this building and I would enter and that my, my, my classroom was right here very first window no one was sure it was the first window and I remember leaving there was steps that went in there and my mom cried I cried she was trying so hard to be strong my mom very seldomly would cry in front of me. She would cry and I would find her crying, but she very seldomly ever cried in front of me. She would fight those tears. First grade, I went in there and my sisters would tell me where they were in case I needed them. Because at that time, I don't know if it's still that way now, is it? Let me know this. At that time, if I needed to see my sister, I could tell the teacher that I really want to talk to my sister or my brother I don't know if my brother went here at the time. They might have already been in junior high by the time I was in first. I can't remember. I really can't. I'd have to reflect. I'll reflect back later and see. But I know my sisters were here, both my sisters and some of my cousins. We all went, you know. It was like a family school. And uh, if I needed to go see my sister, in fact, the teacher told me, if you need to see your sister, um, you can go see her. Okay. So there was a once or twice that I had to go down the hallway and knock on the door. And they knew, here I am to see my sister. And I would tell her whatever was going on and everything would be okay. I didn't really like going to school. I cried. And let me just say that this was only one year that I spent here. I didn't go to kindergarten. I had a lot of uh, pretend friends, a wild imagination. And I felt different sociably, very different. I had long hair, and I wanted to be pretty. And it was very unfortunate for me that I wasn't around people like that. I didn't understand myself. I didn't know why I was the way I was. You know? I wanted to like myself, but I kept feeling I was an outsider. A reject. You know, a societal reject. Do you ever feel like that? Please don't. Don't ever feel that you're a reject. Don't ever feel that you are outcast. Because you're not, you know? We all have our own struggles. You're beautiful. You're beautiful, we're all beautiful. And we don't need makeup for that too, by the way. <laughs> so we came through these bushes, but now is a fence. I don't want to get too close because that's the house I've just been sharing a lot of time with you at. I don't want to upset or offend anybody right now. This is a school. And we used to come up here and play a lot of times too, all around the school. We never got in trouble for doing that. Nobody ever screamed at us or, you know, what are you guys doing up there? And these swing sets over here, I spent a lot of time on. And can I just tell you, I was scared to swing. Yes, I was even scared to swing. But we all know, if you look back on my music videos, which if you type in my name, VCAT, that's V with a K, V-K-A-T, um, into YouTube. You can find other videos. I got a YouTube page there. Tracy Lynn Michael, which you can find off my website. And I love to be on swings. I videotape myself on swings. And this was one challenge that I overcame. But that was because one day, my cousins and all of us used to come up here and we would swing. And when we would swing, we would push each other. Push. Okay? And uh, from what I remember, from what I remember, this could be wrong, but I believe it's right. 
My cousin was pushed too hard and it went around. It went around. Can you believe that? Can you believe that I actually happened to someone? Did it happen to you? Do you know anybody it happened to by any chance? And I'll never forget, I was devastated. I was scared to swing after that. But eventually I came up here and I remember that I would come up here when I got my driver's license. And I would sit in that swing and I'd swing and I'd reflect back. I had a habit of doing this, keep going back in time, keep going back in time. I was trying to figure things out. What went wrong for me? Why am I sad? Why ain't I happy? And I say ain't because ain't is very Pennsylvania Dutch to a not. What do you think of saying a not? Meaning I am not, you know, ain't. Ain't ain't a word because the teacher says it ain't. <laughs> Can you say that with me? Ain't ain't a word because the teacher says it ain't. We used to go around this uh, <laughs> playground and we would be singing it, you know, because one of us would say ain't and they would say, don't you know that ain't ain't a word because the teacher says it ain't? <laughs> and how right they are. And you will find out in my perspective of things that I've learned in life that just because somebody says something is not, doesn't mean that it isn't. And just because somebody says something is, doesn't mean that it's true. And a lot of times, more so than not, it's somebody's perspective, or maybe somebody created a buzz, and they wanted people to assume something that was not true. Why is an ain't a word? Why is it wrong for me to say ain't? So how I grew up, there was something inside of me that I always wanted to say it. I'm German. Pennsylvania Dutch lady, okay? I say ain't sometimes, you know? Maybe my English grammar is not up to snuff. <laughs> now, one of the games that we used to love playing here, check this out. See that wall? Dodgeball. Do you remember playing dodgeball? Did you ever play a game of dodgeball? What it is, you would stand up there against the wall and uh, whoever was out here, somebody who was elected, would take a ball and they would throw it at us. Okay? Literally throw it. Some people really threw really hard. And it stung, especially if you had shorts on. I didn't wear shorts at that time because most times I was too scared to show my legs off. As many of you know, I'm not afraid to show my legs anymore. But because I was at that time what I consider, and most people would agree, I was a pretty boy. And one, one of my biggest fears, let me share this with you. One of my biggest fears was that people were gonna call me gay. I didn't wanna be gay. Do you know what gay is? What's your idea of gay? Leave me a comment, I'm gonna keep on saying that. Leave a comment, leave me feedback, be honest. And don't be, try not to be too mean. You know, it's okay if you wanna insult me, but please don't insult a whole community of people. Um, and let's, let's just be nice and try to figure things out together. Could we? Could we try to figure things out together without hurting people intentionally? It's okay to ask questions, you know? It's okay to have your own perspective. But let's try to have an open mind. What is gay? What, what really is gay? Whatever it was, at this time in my life already, by the time I was six, I didn't want to be it because the world made it seem that it was very negative. I don't feel it's very negative anymore, do you? Be honest and don't, let's, let's try to keep this very painless as possible. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings when they watch this video and see comments, but I can't stop everybody. You want to insult me, it's okay. You can always insult me, but please don't insult anybody else and a whole community of people. So Tracy Lynn didn't want to be gay. Tracy Lynn played dodgeball. She didn't want to wear jeans or she didn't want to wear shorts because she didn't want to show off her legs, except for when she was tanning because, uh, especially if they were white, I didn't want to show them. So I was afraid everybody would make fun of me because they're white. <laughs> and we would come through that yard over there. In a little bit, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna get closer. Right now, I wanna wait until I'm ready to leave. So we played dodgeball. And this is where we had recess. We'd chase each other around in the parking lot. My first year of school. Second home, first year of school. And I would often come back here later years. Why, why was life, what was I missing? What was I missing? What do you think I was missing? Why couldn't I have happiness? Why was I always sad and depressed? Why was I always an outsider? Why couldn't I blend in? 
Why wasn't I interested in all the things that people were? Why did I fear all these things? Why am I so miserable? I'm going to share that with you. I figured a lot of things out. And I'm figuring out more as time goes on. And I want a relationship with you, by the way. I really do. I want a relationship with you if you're willing to have a relationship with me. But I don't want to force myself upon you. I want you to know that I'm one person that I will do very, very hard not to uh, judge you. Judge the things that you've done. I'm definitely very understanding that we all go through our own life journey and our own challenges. So now, really quick, I want to show you where I used to ride my first bike. At the time, there was not these fences over here, okay? There weren't these fences. We're at Jonestown Elementary School, by the way. You can Google it, look it up. Uh, maybe you could Google map it and see what it looks like uh, uh, just not so long ago. But it looked much differently. They didn't have this fence up here. This is where we used to have recess, but this is where we hung out over the summer months and spring. When school was off, we would come here and play basketball, kickball, dodgeball. Uh, we would play, you know, up against the wall. I think that was that dodgeball. Did I say that? <laughs> but here we would have our bikes. Oh, and look here. Look at the hills. Do you see that? We would actually ride our bike down one hill right here. Be careful not to hit the basketball uh, uh, hoops, poles, and then up the other. And let me tell you, you would want to go as fast as possible to jump them on your bike. That was fun. Did you ever do that on a bicycle? You know, that's, that's really fun, you know. And I would watch everybody else do it, and that's something I did partake in, but I didn't go as fast as everyone else. <laughs> I wanted to, but fear held me back, didn't it? Yes, it did. The fear of the unknown. Would I have a successful jump like the General Lee? Or would I miss the mark <laughs> and skin my knee? I just rhymed, didn't I? I like to rhyme. Do you like to rhyme? So this was where we spend a lot of time riding our bikes. The dead end road at Jonestown Elementary School. Pretty much covered everything at this point. I know it's a lot. This is ages three through six, my first year in school. I told you about how I would go down and, and, and have the uh, permission to go visit my sister. I don't know, do they do that at your school now? What if, what if you really need your brother or your sister or somebody in your family to go talk to? Could you do that? Would they let you do that? Because back in the day, in the 70s, they left you do that, at least here. A lot of family members in the local neighborhood all went to the same school. I'm sure it's much different, especially in big cities, too. Share some of your experiences. Did you ever play dodgeball? Did you ever uh, have a dirt bike? What, what about your first dirt bike? Did you, did you bug your mom or your dad, please buy it for me? <laughs> you know, did you ever have a dirt bike stolen? That's a horrible feeling, isn't it? Even if it's from a friend or what have you. Did you ever get into a fight with a friend? What about your animals? Did you ever have a pet and that pet somehow um, lost its life? Did you accidentally run over a cat? Did you purposely run over an animal? You know, these are all these things that I've been sharing with you today. And I would like you to share some feedback with me. You know, but some people may be ridiculous. But I'm investing so much time in sharing with you the details of my life. I'm leaving out a lot. Like for instance, way back there, I remember an amazingly big tree. Amazingly big tree. And remember I told you about the thunderstorms and the lightning. Well, let me tell you something. One night, there was a big bolt of lightning, and we all heard it, we all saw it, and there's a big difference from thunder to a bolt of lightning hit the ground. Oh, it was tremendous. And let me tell you, later on the next day, everybody that was out already before me came running back and saying, you ought to see that tree back there. And we all ran back again, and there was this big tree that was obviously hit by that big bolt of lightning, do you think? Or do you think a big, strong man came by and just pushed it over. He said, watch how strong I am, and he pushed it over. Do you think that happened? <laughs> I don't know. Was it a beaver? Did a beaver take our tree and knock it over? Or do you think that was that bolt of lightning we heard crack? Maybe we were on the front porch that day. I don't remember. But I remember seeing that tree laying over, and I thought, wow, I never want to get hit by a bolt of lightning, ever, ever. <laughs> OK, I never want to get hit by a bolt of lightning. Electricity, 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 electricity. 
from the sky, from the heavens above. Ooh, from the heavens above. I love you. I know I made some people nervous here today. I'm sorry about that. But the show must go on. I have other places to go. Some other people may get nervous. I hope not. My intention is not to offend or hurt anybody. But I had to do what I had to do. And you were probably not the witness to it because I cut it off out of respect for him. But whether you heard it a conversation or not, the bottom line is I told him I am on public property. Um, or not public. Yes, public property. Is that right? It wasn't private property. It was public. And I said, you know, I'm not here spying on you. I'm not shining my camera into your windows or anything like that. I'm not showing your license plates. If they show up, it's not intentionally. And most of the time, obviously, you guys are fully aware that it is my head that you see. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. I was going to have the tripod. I try to think about it a bunch of different ways. This is the easiest way, most convenient, that I can steadily go through my life journey with you and share with you. Some of the things that I've been through, okay? Not everything, but a lot. How about it? It's a lot, isn't it? It may be a little bit too much for some people, but um, deal with it. That's what I'm going to tell you. How about, how about this? I'm going to say it really nicely. Deal with it. Because I want to share with you. I want to share with the world. It's time that I get over the fear of sharing my life. Because that's my dream. What's your dream? My dream is I want to share my entire life with other people. I don't know why. It's what I want to do. Because I learned a lot, and I believe I can help a lot of people. Very strongly. And I don't want anybody out there living life feeling that they're a total outcast, and they don't belong. And I don't want people scared of everything in life. I don't want you, you right here, whoever you are, whether you're 90, 150 years old, if you're still in diapers like me, I don't want you going through life looking at everybody else thinking they got talent and you don't. We all got talent. And we're not here to do everything. We're not here to do everything. And it took me a long time to realize that. I'm not here to do what everybody else is doing. I'm here to do my own thing, to do what Tracy Lynn does, what VCAT does, okay? And I don't want you to imitate me, okay? Let's not imitate each other. You can do it and make fun of me. That would be fun. You know, you, you could say, Hi everyone, my name is Tracy Lynn. I'm also known as V-Cat. Oh, and I'm going to share my life story with you of the last 40 years. You can do whatever you want to do. But let me just say, it will make me laugh. <laughs> make your friends laugh. <laughs> but let me just say this. I'm learning in life, it's a waste of our time and energy to be imitating other people. We should really be finding ourselves and we should be investing our time within ourselves. And when we do that, effectively we are impacting the entire universe. Stay with me, don't go away. Don't, don't take, stop! I'm serious about this. Right now I can guarantee you, you have people in your life that are telling you that you are selfish and you are self-centered and all you care about is whatever you care about. You know, and that's horrible. And I went through my whole life like that. All you care about is yourself. All you care about is playing guitar. All you care about is music. All you care about, all you care about, all you care about. Yes. And I'm here to tell you, yes, it is true. Selfishly, that may sound to you, but I'm here to tell you that first, I must, first grade, first I must care about myself. Which means I have needs. My needs are music. It's very therapeutic for me. My needs are a guitar. My needs are to lift people's spirits up. Okay? Notice, anything here, as I'm going through my struggles, my whole purpose was to entertain people, use my imagination, and try to lift their spirits up, okay? You're going to hear a lot of bizarre stories, but I'm, I know right now that you, everybody, we all go through this. And I'm here to tell you, you're not selfish. If you're staying center-focused, you're doing good. And we all miss the mark of being perfect in the eyes of everybody else. But if you love yourself, you're already made perfect. Okay, so here we go. I'm heading out. I'm going to show one more thing here before we go. And after that, it's onward. It's onward. Let's see, where can I go? To my grandparents. Now, I can't spend too much time there probably because it won't be long before people come out. It's a very closed-in community. A dead-end road. 
um, that's right there. And people get nervous. They want to know what are you doing out in front of the yard. You know, so I'm going to show the house. I'm going to share. Maybe I'll go somewhere else where we can be alone. And because, like I said, I don't want to stir up anything. You know, and right now I'm not, I, I haven't talked to my parents or anything. Nobody knows I'm here in Lebanon at this time. But I want to share with them then, and hopefully I'll have time, make time. I will make time to come and see you. Mom, if you're watching this, I'm going to make time to come and see you. Because it may be a long time before I return. An extremely long time. Say hello to my grandparent. And uh, anybody else, my sister. I love you, Dawn. Um, let me see, what else? That's pretty much it. i got one more thing to show you. Don't forget, VCAT Vblog is what you're watching my life story. I call it the catch-up series catching up doing what I always wanted to do what I always dreamed about look at the bird flying up there you see it you see it let me turn it around look. look how beautiful that is I'm learning how to fly like that bird you want to fly like that bird how beautiful it is. Wow, beautiful. So, what do you think of that? A bird flying above my head, reminding me that that's what I'm doing right now, flying. I'm getting ready to fly. Okay, love you. Peace out. Even though I don't know you, I do care. And I do care about others, not just about myself. That's why I'm sharing with you my life story. And I know a lot of times I don't look at this lens. I look at myself. Because I'm talking to myself right now. But I do know I'm sharing this video. In hopes of connecting with other people. And I want to hear about your life story. Maybe this will ignite something in you to go out with a camera and do the same thing. And you can invite me to your page and I'll subscribe. Or maybe you're already doing it. Maybe you already did it. <laughs> maybe I'm behind the time and I'm catching up. Whatever the reason is, do it. Do it. Share your life. Or don't share your life. Do what you're called to do in life. What you feel led to do. Whatever makes you tick and make you happy, makes you want to jump out of bed and live, rather than lay around and wish you were the opposite. Like me, I have done that for many years. Very sad. I want to share with you that. For many years in the next house that we go to, I started losing more energy. First we had separation of parents, then I had separation of my mom here. School, school was really hard. Never went to kindergarten, went to first grade. I love you, this is way too long, I'm sure, for you. But you can always fast forward ahead. I just want to make sure I get everything out of me. Over here's a garage where we used to come up to to get our uh, bike tires filled. He was a guy. I worked at that garage, very friendly. We would get our sodas there. He had a soda machine. Bottles. Remember the bottles you push in? Ticker, 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 ticker. And you could also get them bottles for free, and your friends were proud to show you how you could get them for free. I never did that. I never did that. Mind you, I never did it. Okay, I didn't do it. So, anyway. <sighs> at that time, I didn't want to be cool like everyone. But let's look over here quick at this pump, okay? Let me just show you this old-fashioned pump. Here we go, ding, 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 ding. Can you do that? Ding, ding. Am I a ding, ding? I'm a ding, ding. You're a ding, ding. We're all a ding, ding. All right, really quick, and I'm going to shut it off, and we're going to go over here on the other side of the post office, the other side of the house. Jonestown, Pennsylvania. Zip code is 17038. I still remember that to this day. This guy almost ran me over in a car. I gotta watch where I'm going. But check this out. Over here. Look at this air pump. So you would adjust it right here with this knob. And you see how you can set the tire pressure? Do you still have one of those in your neighborhood? I would think that's a valuable piece of equipment there. And then when you actually hook that air nozzle up to your car tire or your bicycle tire at the time it was, and a lot of times that guy I was in there, he would help us. He would always help us. He's very friendly. Do you have any guys like that 
in your neighborhood or ladies that would actually help you and you look forward to going to their garage or to a mini mart store or something you know just to see that one person I have a couple people like that in my life that I, I'm looking forward very much to share with you because they really liked everybody they were very non-judgmental like my grandfather um, and they didn't talk very much about God or Jesus or anything like that they just showed love and I think that's important whatever our beliefs are you know I'm not here to condone anybody's belief I love everybody and uh, you know I think it's very important for all of us can I just say it's very important for all of us not to judge to just love each other as we are and know that we're all growing we're all learning together I want to learn with you I want to learn about your life I want to share my life with you maybe there's something for you to learn in my history I'm sure there's something for me to learn in your history I want to learn more about you um, so please share my name is Tracy Lynn I'm also known as VCAT I know a lot of people might not like saying it the V stands for victory I have to embed that in my head that I am about victory. I want to bring people into a life of victory, a true life of victory, not by manipulating and twisting their minds. How about I just share my life stories and I share with you what I believe were some of my cruelest mistakes, some of my trials and my errors, uh, some of my struggles, uh, some of the things I was embarrassed about, some of the things I feared. How about if I do that with you? And you do with this whatever you choose to. You can make fun of me, you can humiliate me. Um, but let's try to be as nice as possible, no matter which way we go. Because really, we know in the end, we're all just human. And we're all just trying to make our way through life as happy as we can be. I want you to find your happiness. I'm going to show you places later on of places that brought me happiness. But right now, the next place I'm going to take you to is a place that I felt I was the most judged. Okay? Judged very harshly. And my mom knew it. My mom talked to me often about it. I'm going to share it with you right now. It's my grandparents' house on my mother's side. And they were very religious, very Christian-oriented. And let's just say, unlike my dad's parents, her parents made it very hard on her when it came to the divorce. My mom was actually divorced before my dad. So I, my brother and my older sister, my older brother and my older sister, they had a different dad. We had the same mom. Uh, my sister, after my oldest sister, who would have been kind of like a middle child there, uh, we had the same dad and same mom. So a lot of times that caused all kinds of uh, issues amongst the children. Sometimes I think that's why we kind of separated ourselves as brothers and sisters in a way. You know, you have a different dad, so therefore you're not like me, you know. When, when times got hard, but pretty much so. We, we, we were a very tight family until things sometimes came between us, then all of a sudden there's a problem with that, you know? So, uh, I hope you don't feel that way. Many people have different parents. And sometimes our parents are our grandparents or our aunts. Uh, brothers and sisters. Okay, maybe they're older. I don't know, maybe they're younger. What do you think of that? So just know this. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to show you something really exciting. It's a, a waterway. And just know that I love you guys. I got more people who are watching. They got a dog barking. So I'm going to stay strong, stay true to it, what it is that I'm doing. People will learn to get over it. Love, peace, happiness. Bye. As you guys can see, I'm extremely open. If there's trouble coming my way, I'm going to share it with you. You know, because I went through a lot of bulldogging years where, uh, whether it was from a, a public figure of like a law enforcement or if it was an elder in my life when I was a child growing up, it always seemed like I was always getting in everybody's way. I was always annoying people with my life, no matter how innocently I was trying to make it through. So right here in this grass field, this used to be a cornfield. That road down here actually did not exist at the time it was down even further than it is now okay so this off on way part didn't i don't know if you can see it here let me hold it here there you go see that curve right there that actually didn't exist but down there behind those trees are the swatty yes the swatty that ran through here 
You will see when I go to my grandparents in a little bit that the Swati also runs through there. So, with that being said, do you remember what toboggans are? Have you ever uh, ridden it in the winter time when there's snow on the ground? Did you ever ride a toboggan? Did you ever ride a sled? Um, I'm curious to know, in the winter time, what was your favorite things to do? What are your favorite things to do now? At that time in my life as a child growing up, this was a cornfield and over the winter months of course the corn is removed uh, by the farmer and there's little stalks here. So you gotta be careful when you're on a toboggan. It's a, a little plastic uh, snowboard like type thing and it has a little handle on the front, a little yellow handle. Mine was blue and yellow and uh, we used to go down on our toboggans on this hill. And at that time, let me just say that it seemed like it was a long way down here. And I'm gonna stop right here for a second. You see that tree line? See how far away we are? And you look at this grass field over here. Let me just say that very few people ever, you know, unless we had ice, and ice over the snow, a crust of ice, very seldom did anybody ever get as far down to, to the Swati. As you can see, it's taken some time to get down here. But I will tell you this right now. At one point, there, we would sometimes go two or three people on a toboggan. We had, some, some of us had bigger toboggans, and we'd all pile on. And I was usually the caboose. <laughs> and I would always fall off way up there. <laughs> so I never made it the whole way down. <laughs> I was still little at that time. And I was scared and I would be holding on to everybody. I was always a scared one. I feared everything. But uh, anyway, so if, it, my, not, if I'm not mistaken, it was either my cousins or my brother. I'm gonna kinda go around here really quick to the, the bridge. Lots of bridges in my life with memories. And uh, so anyway, that was a big deal because, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, they made it all the way down to the Swati and we were so scared did they actually fall in and thank goodness, <laughs> thank goodness that there was ice over top of the Swati. It's frozen. So there was ice on the snow and then when he got down to the Swati, it was frozen as well. Now I'm going to show you something else that happened in our childhood. Look at this hill up here. See how the cars come down? That hill? Did I do it right? Yeah, that one's going up, but they also come down the other way. Okay. But one time, my grandma, my grandma had a station wagon. And she would usually get all of us children. There's four of us. And then my cousins at that time, there was three. You know, three of them three boys. So there was a few of us girls and uh, quite a few boys. And eventually my younger cousin, who was a girl, came along. And everybody loved her to death. We're all riding in the back of the station wagon, right? Except for my brother. And I don't remember if he was on a skateboard or his bicycle. Something tells me he was on a skateboard. Coming down that hill. Okay. And when he came up here, I don't know if it was his bike or his skateboard. I think it was a skateboard. Okay. He hit this curve right here. See that? Where my foot is? You see that? Do you see that? He hit that and flew off. Whether it was his bike or his skateboard, he flew off and I remember that. And I remember being in the back of the station wagon and my expression was, <laughs> we were all driving down the road in our station wagon, my grandma's station wagon, going <laughs> shocked. Another shock to the system. What happened to my brother? I hope he's all right. Grandma, we're all young. Grandma, as she's going up the road there, we had to go turn around, and we're all young. Grandma, come back. So we're gonna end it right here. I told you I was gonna end it. I'm sorry that I continued on. I know it's long. Again, you can always hit fast forward or you can go to the next video right away if it's boring you. Tell me what I could do to improve it. It's hard for me to use a tripod. I don't really have anyone in my life to hold the camera. Um, 
I don't have time for costumes and reenacting anything, which would be great. So what I'm going to do is keep it very simple, very sweet, and just share my story, okay? I don't have time to write a book or nothing like that that I always wanted to do. But this is a swatty, and we're going to say goodbye to that. Know that Tracy Lynn grew up around water. Do you think that that's why Tracy Lynn loves to be by water all the time? Because she grew up around it? Could that be one thing? Something I was drawn to and attracted to? Let me tell you something. You're going to find out, as I'm sharing my life story, that that's one thing I'm 100% sure of. I love to be around water. I was born in the flood of 72. Um, we, we were always lived by the Swati. Obviously, when this flooded up, we were scared because our house was right up there. And you'd be surprised how high a Swati can go, especially as a child, how big it looks. But let me tell you that sometimes it's very unfortunate that all this grassland down here, and even up to a, a large portion of this field over here, you'd be surprised how quickly that can fill up when we have a heavy rain. Do you like water? Do you like to hang around the water? Did you ever go swatty, swimming? Oh, I have some stories for you about that. Remember, I was scared of water, but there's some things I just overcame very quickly. So, uh, I love you. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Consider it. Hit the subscribe button. It's, uh, I don't know which side it's on. Let me just practice. Is it on this side? Is it on this side? My website should be on this side, but I'm not sure. I'm kind of confused. <laughs> Visit my website. Download some free music. Get to know who I am. The songs are stories about my life, things that I've encountered. Some of them are about other encounters with other people that I may have met along life's journey. I love to share my life. I'm a storyteller. That's what I do. I love to tell stories. Do you like to tell stories? Share with me a story. Even if it's a fairy tale, you can make it up. You don't, you don't have to uh, be completely honest. I'm going to try to do it for you because I think that's important. It's important for my final message to share with you. To let you know there is a child, a child in my life that I'm going to share later on with you. I'll try to speed things up here. I have a son. I want to be straightforward. To this day, I don't know 100% is he a, if he is of my blood, but I accepted him in as my son. And that's a really long story that I'm going to try to summarize because I know that's a very touchy subject with a lot of people. It's not touchy with me anymore. I have healed. I have forgiveness for everything. And uh, I'm not going to say his name, obviously, as I'm going to try to edit out everybody's name. If I say your name, please, 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 please know it was an accident and it was a miss out of tell me, tell me privately or what have you. And I will do my best to eliminate that and, and make amends. I do have a son, and this message is dominantly for myself to heal, fully seal the deal and move on with my life. I call it the catch-up series, and also I want to give something to my son. I want to hear your life story. Will you share it with me? Some of it, tidbits. Will you insult me or something? <laughs> it's okay. I love you. Peace out. We're going to my grandmother's next. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're running out of battery. We're running out of memory. Let's do it now. Come on. <laughs>